Hello everyone, my name is Pixorifs and welcome back to the Skyblock Survival Guide. I hope you guys are having a good day. Today we're starting off outside of the Nether Portal and the Squid Farm that I built in the last episode. Just to clarify something about the Squid Farm, which I believe I did put a, a bit of a text explanation in the video itself, but I made one crucial error because it's been a while since I built a Squid Farm, so I kind of forgot to bring this up verbally in the video. Although, yeah, I, I tried to clarify that a little bit when I was in the edit. So the problem with these squid farms is that it kind of relies on the squid's natural movement and mob movement basically stops for most mobs, give or take things like slimes that bounce around and stuff. Most mobs will stop moving and remain stationary once the player is more than 32 blocks away. So despite the fact that we do have 30 ink sacks in here, I think because the squid actually start moving around when they initially spawn, but that you'll see that squid up there is basically just kind of pirouetting inside the box. It is not really moving from that point, and that is because I am further than 32 blocks away. Hence the need to add this little AFK platform type thing up here, which I'll probably expand a little bit and maybe make a slightly more coherent AFK box so that I can remain between 23 and 32 blocks away from the farm, optimizing the distance between me and the farm, allowing the squid to still spawn in the farm, but not being so far away that they won't move and therefore won't fall into the trap. Hopefully that should still be far enough away from the hostile mob farm that they all get pushed into the water and everything works as normal. So yeah, I made a slight miscalculation with that, but there's really nowhere else you can build a squid farm. It has to be between between those coordinates in a river biome or an ocean biome, so it kind of had to be there and we'll just have to adjust our expectations for the AFK platform for the husk farm. The husk farm has been doing super well though, we've got ourselves nearly two full stacks of sand, which is freaking miraculous, we got ourselves that sand collector achievement there and I'll grab the gravel from in here as well. I may as well bring the bones and stuff back with me and I will once again be stockpiling arrows for when we eventually go and fight the dragon, which I think is probably only a couple of episodes away at this point. But back through our nether hub to the central island we go, and I think we're going to be spending a little bit more time in the nether today because I want to make a start on setting up a nether mob farm in a much larger scale than the uh, tower fortress section that we have over there. I want to be able to farm a lot of blaze powder. The reason being, I want to be able to make magma blocks so that we can make a slime farm. Campfires are not going to be ideal for a slime farm for a couple of reasons. The first being the sheer number of them that we will need in order to run a farm around this slime chunk optimally, and I don't know how that's going to affect this mob spawner, considering that we have some redstone stuff there, but I have a feeling we can probably just box that off on one side and allow the slimes to fling themselves into the other three directions on the platform. We don't even need to go the iron golem route. We could do that if we wanted to be super efficient, but I think the slimes will probably just bounce off to one side or the other eventually anyway, because slimes are kind of like that. The problem being, of course, that a lot of campfires will produce a lot of particle effects, and we really want to avoid that just for the purposes of making sure this world doesn't become extraordinarily laggy if we place like a whole bunch of campfires in a specific area. But I still want to be able to farm the slimes, and so we're probably going to work on getting a bunch of magma blocks so we can make a farm similar to the one that we built in the survival guide world, just probably without the iron golems. So how are we going to make all of that magma cream? Well, it turns out I already have a fair amount of blaze powder and slime balls, which we can combine to make magma magma cream, and as any good crafting guide will tell you, a 2x2 two two of magma cream makes you one magma block. So despite the nether not having a landscape we can farm magma blocks from, we are able to create them like that. Now the problem becomes getting blaze powder in large enough quantities, and while obviously yes this is going towards a slime farm, it's a lot easier to farm slime than it is to farm blazes, because slimes split up constantly and with looting on a sword, which we don't have right now, but we could easily add to it with some of the enchanted books that we got around here, we got a looting 2 book there, we should be able to acquire a decent amount of slime balls just by opening up that platform again and hanging around the farm until some slimes spawn. The problem now becomes getting enough blaze powder in large quantities, and for that, I think we're probably going to head out to the nether and build ourselves a large spawning platform. Now, what I have been told about this map, the way this map works is that instead of having a nether fortress that generates a large area with 
a bunch of individual hitboxes around each section of the fortress, making sure fortress mobs will spawn on any block inside that area. What this map has done instead is create a huge nether fortress hitbox that covers basically the entirety of the nether at certain Y coordinates. So oh, <laughs> the blaze just took care of that skeleton for me, very nice. So instead of having a fortress that we have to set up around a certain area, we actually get to use basically the entirety of the nether any way we want to. However, technically speaking, I'm not entirely sure if that giant hitbox that covers basically all of those Y coordinates in the nether is going to be the hitbox of a fortress corridor where you can place any type of block and it is spawnable, or if it is the hitbox of a larger nether fortress structure, in which case we would have to use nether brick in order to spawn it. I'm going to assume that it is a nether fortress corridor on the grounds that there is a limited amount of nether brick in this world and no way of obtaining more nether brick. It doesn't seem to drop from any mobs. You can't get it from smelting netherrack because there is no netherrack in the game. So basically we are stuck using this amount of nether brick if that is the case. If not though, we should just be able to make the platform out of cobblestone slabs at the right height, which is what I intend to do. Now that is going to mean slabbing the rest of this room, which I should be able to do with the stone slabs I've got here, just so we can make this area here spawn proof and make sure nothing else spawns down here to ruin the rates of the farm. I'm also going to try and build it a little bit further out that way, because that's a little further away from the zombie pigman spawning platform that I've made. And I'm worried that just because of the biome fog in the nether, I can't see how close we are to my zombie pigman farm and it's actually slowing down the rates that we're getting from this little spawning area so i'm going to cover all of those up with slabs now nothing should be able to spawn in here i can take care of this last zombie pigman in here and what y axis are we at we're at y 64 or 64 and a half technically speaking so i think anything below 64 and above 42 or so should work but what is the y axis of the room down here okay that was at y60 and that was definitely spawning mobs so we could probably make some sort of multi-floor farm but i think to start off with we should just be able to create one single platform at that height i'm actually going to bridge out from this side of the nether fortress here in order to make that happen and this is going to take the form of a nice wide platform coming out here from the side of the nether fortress we are not quite 128 blocks away from the pigman farm which should just be over there so we might technically speaking interfere with the rates of that but I'm not certain quite how this is going to work since we're on a diagonal from that central area. It might be that we are, technically speaking, 128 blocks away and zombie pigmen won't spawn over there. But the idea being we'll have a nice wide platform here with a roof above it, three blocks high, so that we can make sure that wither skeletons will spawn around here as well. And this is just going to be a floor that I can run around on initially, killing all of the mobs that spawn here. And the reason for the roof here, of course, because we don't have to block skylight in the nether or anything, is so that blazes don't end up drifting any further upwards than this as well so I want to make sure that they are in an enclosed area here now let me quickly run away and perform a test to see if anything does spawn on this platform once we are 23 blocks away from it because that will really tell us whether or not stuff can spawn on yep looks like we're getting zombie pigmen over there now let's see if we get any fortress mobs spawning on there in the meantime man that platform is quick to spawn pigmen but it does not seem to be spawning anything else as far as I can tell, which, yep, that's a lot of pigmen. That is, unfortunately, bad news for us, because that means we're probably going to have to take down this entire nether fortress in order to get enough bricks to make a solid spawning platform. The mobs were able to spawn inside of there, but they weren't able to spawn outside and wow yeah that is a huge horde of pigmen very very quickly well the good news is we have another gold farm the bad news however is that it doesn't look like fortress mobs are going to be able to spawn on the cobblestone out there so we are going to have to go back to the drawing board and make this whole thing out of nether brick we can keep the roof made out of cobblestone of course but i think nether brick is going to have to be the way forward which means we're going to have to very carefully take out some of the blocks around that end portal either that or we'll just mine the entire thing out below that and keep the top of the tower but this is going to take a little bit of work. So I have been slowly but surely reformatting this area of the nether fortress and I have encountered a couple of scientific or somewhat scientific discoveries that I think are going to be relevant to you. For a start it is very easy to run out of cobblestone slabs even when you're trying to make the place look a little bit tidy so apologies for the giant gaping holes in a few of these things but I decided I would box this off with glass panes, glass bought from my librarian villager just to give us a little bit of an outside view of what's spawning inside of here so that we can see 
when some blazes and stuff have spawned. Unfortunately for me, it turns out no blazes spawned in here whatsoever because this entire floor is made out of nether brick slabs. And once again, unfortunately for me, we have to build this entire thing out of full blocks for any fortress mobs to spawn. If you build it out of nether brick slabs, if you build it out of slabs or, you know, full blocks of any other material, endless amounts of zombie pigmen will spawn in this space but nether fortress mobs will not. And so, having thought I could conserve some materials by making this entire floor out of slabs, it now turns out I will have to dig down a little bit further and turn all of these into full blocks if they are going to function as spawnable space for nether fortress mobs. So what I've done is dig out the inside of this tower a little bit. I figured we could excavate some of the interior to make material for that. And I've made a lot of it into slabs right now, but of course we can double up on the slabs to make them full blocks. Not the biggest deal in the world. The big deal now is having to get out underneath this platform in order to turn each of these slabs into full blocks. And so I'm going to have to bridge out ever so carefully out here. Thankfully we are not in any kind of conditions where ghasts could spawn, otherwise I would be a little bit more tentative about doing this. But I think, yeah, stretching to the edge like so should be fine. We can fill all of these in underneath and that will turn them into full blocks and hopefully that should now create a spawnable space for any of the fortress mobs. But this is going to be a little bit of a job if we need to make the entire thing out of full nether brick blocks that is potentially hampering the amount of material we can use here considering we have no real way to generate nether brick in large quantities here in Skyblock. It is one of the things that has not been made renewable along with all of the stuff that has, as far as I can tell at least. So let me take away this little artificial bridge here, losing all of the wood, not too worried about that. Let's brick up the remaining section here, although it does seem like we could maybe expand this outwards by one block if we're excavating out the center here, which is good to know. And I think, hopefully, if we take out all of the torches in here, we should now start to see some nether fortress mobs spawning inside this space. And naturally, we're still going to get a few zombie pigmen as well, because those will spawn naturally on any solid block in the nether, but the spawning attempts made for nether fortress mobs are going to be greater. And so hopefully, if we clear out the pigmen every so often, we should start to see a few fortress mobs spawning in there. We want skeletons, we want wither skeletons, we want blazes. And to be fair, a little bit of gold isn't such a bad thing either, because I still need bits and pieces of that here and there for stuff like powered rails and so on further down the line. But yeah, I'm hoping that that is not a spawnable area for ghasts. I think they need four blocks of height and there are only three blocks of height there so hopefully that shouldn't be a problem let's see if we get any nether fortress mob spawns this time well folks it turns out skyblock can teach you quite a lot about the way this game operates i'm here in a test version of the skyblock world because frankly this was completely baffling me i had replaced all of the slabs in that platform with full blocks or so I thought. I'm going to run a couple of commands here to kill these mobs as they appear, so just bear with me. This is obviously not my main Skyblock world. Like I said, this is a test world. And can you tell me the difference between these two platforms? This one here on the left versus this one here on the right. The answer will become apparent once a couple more spawn cycles have turned up, because as you can see, some fortress mobs are spawning over there on the left-hand platform and they are not spawning on the right. And this is no coincidence because I have been tracking the spawns on each of these platforms for a couple of minutes now, and as you can see, we have a bunch of pigmen spawning on this platform on the right, we have the fortress mob spawning on the platform on the left. The pigmen are not exclusive to that platform on the right, we will still get the occasional pigman, but the platform on the right is always spawning pigmen and nothing else. Well, occasionally ghasts, as you saw, but it doesn't have a roof over the top of it. And you know why this is? It's because that platform there is made out of double slabs and that platform there is made out of blocks. Apparently, the game takes into account the fact that a block is a double slab and does not spawn fortress mobs on the double slab. It only spawns it on something that is actually a full block. And if you look in the F3 debug info, as you will see here, that says on the targeted block info on the right hand side, nether brick slab type double. Functionally, that is a full block for all intents and purposes, but the way Nether Fortress mob spawning works, it will only detect if the targeted block is a full block of nether bricks, not a double slab. Unbelievable, and I've just wasted a whole bunch of resources converting regular nether brick into slabs because I was not aware of this distinction, which 
is a little bit embarrassing, if I'm honest with you, because now we have a bunch more mining of the rest of this tower to do. Luckily, as I said, they have provided a decent amount of nether brick on the interior of this that we can rebuild these platforms. But just look at the spawn rates we're getting on that left-hand platform compared to the trash we are getting on the right. This is kind of ridiculous, but now at least we know. Now we have conclusive proof that we can get hold of nether fortress mobs, if only I had the presence of mind to use full nether brick blocks in the first place instead of attempting the slab method. Ridiculous, but now we know. All right, let's get back into the main skyblock world. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> finally, finally the freaking things start spawning. Oh, good. Okay, so my suspicions have been confirmed. It is necessary for it to be full blocks inside this area for fortress mobs to spawn including a magma cube which i'd kind of completely forgotten existed in all of this hustle to get magma cream from blazes and slimes it is actually possible to spawn magma cubes in the nether if you want to that's actually a little bit more sensible to be perfectly honest but now i think i may as well just get rid of these guys get rid of the wither skeletons first of course take out the blazes when i have a chance to rush in there and I, of course i could do a little bit more of this with a fire resistance potion if i wanted to take down the blazes without getting too badly burned but now i know the spawning parameters a little bit better i'm considering what else we can do in terms of making this into a farm the way i'm going to do it which will probably involve redesigning this platform a little bit and probably adding some more platforms around the circumference of this tower is what i plan on doing is having a couple of slime block flying machines pushing mobs that spawn on these platforms in towards a central collection area where we can just swipe at their feet until they die that'll be blazes with the skeletons zombie pigmen basically anything and hopefully the magma cubes that spawn up here will end up getting crushed in the crossfire and i think we'll be able to make one of these kind of modules on all four sides of the central tower and maybe use the tower as a collection area maybe just drop them a whole bunch as well so that they can uh, take a little bit of fall damage on the way down and be easier to swipe and kill but finally we understand the spawning requirements for some fortress mobs inside of here at last we can do away with the slabs just build everything out of full blocks and hopefully have no further problems right now we've got that out of the way i may as well actually add this looting enchantment along with maybe that sharpness enchantment as well to my diamond sword because right now it's got sweeping edge which is really useful but nothing else which is frankly a little bit of a shame so i think what i'm gonna do is throw all of this stuff in here so i have a little bit more space in my inventory and alas those nether brick slabs are probably gonna have to go in here and use them on something else but i think what i'm gonna do is enchant this sword a little bit extra and then go back in there and see how many blaze rods i can farm so let's combine the books first because i think that will probably make for a slightly cheaper enchanting operation there we go seven on that one add mending for three levels and then Ooh, 12 levels just about managed to make it sweeping edge two looting two sharpness three and mending love it okay this is my sword <laughs> it's a little bit cobbled together but i think it'll do for the time being let's go fight some blazes no 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 no! wait wait before i forget where did i put yes fire resistance potions that's better that is what i'm talking about look at the amount of blazes in that farm now oh i'm looking forward to getting stuck into these guys hopefully should get I'm going to say about a stack of blaze rods and see how much magma cream we can make out of that. To be honest, it's probably not going to translate into that many magma blocks, so we might have a bit of a grind to do here. So all in all, that was not terrible. I <laughs> got myself 58 blaze rods before the second potion of fire resistance ran out. Also managed to get 26 magma cream from just those magma cubes alone, meaning that I can make... I guess six more magma blocks and then the blaze powder obviously gets split in half so we have enough to make a little bit more as far as the magma blocks go that might be enough to get one corner of the slime farm started maybe but 13 magma blocks is not exactly going to cut it for the long term and for the short term i kind of have another idea and it will return to the campfires but we're just going to use a small area of them and it's effectively going to be using the player as bait oh yeah forgot to mention the other thing i got was our third with a skeleton skull so that's a uh, prospect for the future we could potentially summon the wither i'm gonna probably do that under the bedrock portal in the end because 
As I've said in previous episodes, I really don't feel like fighting the Wither in a Skyblock setup. So anyway, the way this is going to go is we're going to make a few more campfires. I reckon a 3x3 should be enough to get the largest slimes in there as well. We're obviously going to have a few hoppers nearby, so let me grab a little bit more iron, and I'm sure we have plenty of that flowing from the iron farm as well. And last but not least, we're going to need a handful of cobblestone slabs and some of the glass panes that I just made to surround that nether farm. So if you guys remember, the actual spawning area for the slimes is over here behind the general mob farm and as you can see and you can hear <laughs> this thing is actually going super well people have told me that apparently when witches start taking damage and taking potions inside of here they don't despawn but it doesn't sound like we have a huge amount of witches in there so i think we should be all right for now gonna place a few slabs up the side of this so that i can make my way over the top and we can get to the platform around the back so this platform here is our original mob spawning platform and it is where we initially found a lot of slime spawning. What we're going to do is build out a little walkway for the player to go and stand on and lure the slimes towards me. Or, I don't know, maybe in a minute or two we could try and bring an iron golem over here from the villagers because that <laughs> it just occurred to me that the villagers are effectively manufacturing iron golems for us at this point and since we have leads it should be easy enough to get one of those over here. As we know from our previous experiences with this spawning platform, one of the biggest problems is that slimes will just kind of wander off the edges. So we are going to surround this platform in a minute but first I figure we may as well set up an area over here where we're going to have hot and a collection mechanism and we don't want to go 23 blocks away from the farm with this little walkway here we're actually going to be standing a little bit further away but making sure that the slimes can see me and track towards me <laughs> there we go we actually have a couple of them spawning over there already gonna wait for those to turn around please turn around don't spot me now oh no Yep, looks like he is just going to leap off into the void. Perfect. All right, <laughs> let's head back over here just so we don't get anything spawning in the meantime. In the interest of slime preservation, which is kind of a weird concept, I know, but bear with me. We're going to set this platform to be three blocks wide like so, and then it's going to come out one more block, and we're going to have our three by three of hoppers all feeding into this chest with the campfires on top of them, for the time being at least. There we go. If I could place those right, that'd be perfect, and then we're going to pop all of the campfires on top of here. Once again, if I could place them right, that'd be lovely. And for now, we are just going to turn all of these off by whacking them with a shovel. I've got my flint and steel on me, so I can always relight them once we're over the other side, with the idea being that slimes that spawn over here will eventually hop their way towards me over here and once they spot me they'll make their way onto the campfires where they will just end up getting burnt up and all the slime will end up in that chest. Now we're going to widen the platform out one more block just for the sake of symmetry and we need to make sure that the slimes don't hop their way off the platform so I think we're just going to surround it with these glass panes. Now despite my experiences with the nether mob farm just now I have it on good authority i.e the episodes of the survival guide we've done about slime farming previously that slimes can spawn on slabs. So that row over there should be totally fine to add and I'm just going to space the torches out a little bit more. Perfect. Let's get the panes put up around the rest of the farm here. And on the ends of the farm here, I'm just going to basically cordon this whole thing off with slabs, making it so that the slimes shouldn't be able to jump over the top of the area with the campfires. They should just make their way towards me, jump up and down on the campfires and eventually just burn themselves out. Okay, the campfires have been lit and hopefully I am safe behind here. I might add an extra row of slabs on the top if it looks like the slimes could jump over and get me, but it seems like maybe the mob spawner over there might be decreasing the spawn rates. But nope, we have a slime over here already. Let's see if we can get its attention. That's right, big fella. Come this way. Come this way. I have a feeling it's kind of getting caught on the railings there. I wonder if maybe I should have brought the campfires a little bit closer. Yeah, I have a feeling that maybe it's just not quite able to hop down here. Nope, it's seen me. It's seen me. This is the proof of concept. Oh, oh dear. <laughs> yeah, maybe this didn't work quite as well as I planned. So yeah, note to self, put a high barrier over the top of this to make sure slimes cannot jump out of the campfires. That is kind of concern number one here. And with a slime that large, I imagine just putting a set of glass panes over the top of this should be sufficient to block it. The trick really is leaving some sight lines for the slime to make its way in here. Yep, that's looking a lot more promising to me. Hopefully the slime should start to divide up. And then the big problem here now is going to be if the slime ends up 
dividing and falling off the platform to the side. But I guess you can always throw a couple of sword swings in there if you want to. And look at that. <laughs> we got ourselves nine slime balls for our first slime block. A little bit janky. Not exactly the most efficient farm design in the world, of course. But I think it's going to do the job. Okay, now you're talking. We've got three of them spawned in there. And I am kind of relying on them just gradually making their way over here by pathfinding but i think <laughs> the uh the final design of course if we're using magma blocks we can just put a platform of magma blocks around the outside and leave them to jump off into it with the reason being slimes will gradually make their way around anyway and they are not necessarily going to be affected by the player proximity in the same way that the squids were at the start of this video if you consider the fact that slimes bounce around a whole bunch they're effectively going to bounce themselves off into the killing area one way or the other and if we just make sure that's a little bit of a jump down for them even if we have to raise the platform a little bit and lower our spawn rate we should see a fair amount of them making their way off the platform and much as I would love for that to be made out of campfires I have a feeling that the particle effects of the campfires are just going to be a little bit of a hindrance at that stage no worries though and it looks like we've got another wow okay yeah 11 slime balls coming in doing pretty well at this point oh and we have a couple lingering on the edge of the campfire maybe in a second I'll break through here put out the campfires with my shovel and go pick those up well about five minutes and a handful of slime later we actually have 49 slime balls which is not bad for just a short, very, very short AFK session. I think we do need to redesign this though, because I don't want it to just be standing around over here, hoping that slimes path find their way towards me. So I think what we might actually do, like I said, is drag some of the iron golems over from the village, which seems to be reproducing them at quite the rate lately. And we will do our best to make sure that they get stationed around the farm, maybe with little campfire pads or something like that, but probably with some magma blocks now that we have access to magma cream enough to make a few of them and if you're just using these occasional little pads of campfires i really don't think it would be a problem as far as the particle effects go but you do want to have an alternative just in case and i think magma blocks probably fit the bill but i think that's probably where we're going to leave it for this episode of the skyblock survival guide i hope you've enjoyed the episode if you did don't forget to leave a like on it subscribe if you want to see more and i'll see you guys soon take care bye for now